So this one's just an exploratory one. A walk extending from the river walk, and I do love going where I've never been before. And I've looked on the map, and there could be a spot that goes along the river that I think is a circular walk for me. I've got Jack's a dog, Mike's dog. Mike's up in, I don't know, not Scotland, north somewhere. And here's one river, part of it. Private fishing. I've never ever seen anybody fishing there. And this always has a tinge in it. It always has a sort of smoky tinge. This particular section, I have never seen a fish in. I don't like the colour of it. I've had no rain. The colour tells me don't bother anyway, even if I could. But it's just one of those places where, as you can see, it's just an open vista. I've always been one for... Now, Mike likes hills and mountains. I like sort of open plains type places. I don't know whether it's the, the freedom, etc., that gives you a sense of freedom. Few of us have left now. Few of us have the chance to enjoy. Doggy enjoys it. Look, he's off. He's off with the fairies. He is away. He's in the world of dog sniffs, hunting. Well, that is Jack Russell's. They are originally bred, I believe, for ratting, getting rid of rats. Did somebody tell me it was the when the Black Death was on, the plague and all that, that, that they, got, they got the Jack Russells in to kill all the rats? I don't know. And normally in here they have, and they're over there, you won't see them, some belted Galloways, cattle, and they don't seem to move around much. I've noticed when I've been walking here before, they don't really move much, those belted Galloways. They're not actively feeding across the field, you know. Yeah, there's about six or eight there. So we're going to walk along, and what we're going to do is try and extend along a river here and see upstream whether I can get right through and do a circular walk. I don't know how long it is. I might get lost. I've got no ordnance survey map. I'm just going for a walk with doggy. It's nearly as good as fishing. It's going to be windy, so I'll try and do the best I can. It's going to be shaky. I've just got a handheld camera. What I want to know is, right, that I understand they put all these in plastic bags. Hay or haylage? Is it for this winter's feed, or can they keep those several years like that? You can see, look, there's a split one, so I guess they rot down if they're not sealed up. And my grandparents always told me when there's lots of berries on bushes like this, that it's going to be a really harsh winter. And they were put there especially for the birds, for the creatures. I think it's just been perhaps a good summer. Does anybody else have any theory times on that? Have they noticed a lot of berries this winter? or less berries because we've had very dry in the south of England. Just another theory. And we just look at the vista there, 360 degrees of horizon. Blue sky, very, very windy, very windy. Easterly wind, I was out yesterday. The wind was gonna come yesterday, but didn't luckily. We got away with a little bit of decent fishing for change. Not sure what river this is. Come on, come on. So the river here, I come and do a water walk up here once. I did cold with it. It was twice this, twice this width. Unbelievable. Looks like there's a little walk along there. But just choked with rushes and reeds. Probably, I imagine. They would get fish in there. It looks fishy to me. Very fishy. strange that you'd come to a river like this or a stream, small rivers especially, and you'd see fish rising. I see no insect life at all, which is quite concerning. Come on, Mush. Good boy. You still walk along and you look and you think, a handful of maggots and a stick float. I wouldn't think it's a big bait water. I mean, years ago they used to... Um, have clubs, you know, you have a club that would look after the stretch and the members would go out and we clear swims. I can remember up on the Loddon somewhere, nobody asked me to, I cleared about three swims, literally got in there with chest waders, created the swims, clear weed out. Phew, nobody's going to do it now, really, are they? Except enthusiasts. And there's few of those about and the poor old rivers do seem in a bit of a state. 
Depends if you were brought up on rivers, you know, I mean, I fish for everything, from sea to beach. You guys know that, you've seen enough films now. Been doing that for 60 years, I'm still drawn to a river like that. It's tiny. It could be chub, trout, who knows, maybe grayling, I don't know. I mean, I would say originally the, the river went over there somewhere. That was one straight from that bush across here was the flow of the river. Now it's down to a trickle down the middle. Doggy doesn't care, he's just eating his grass. I think it's an emetic for dogs, they eat the grass. But he's enjoying himself, look. He's out having a walk with his Uncle Graham. Looking in the river, I mean, when you go for a walk with a dog, you sort of live part of the freedom with them, I feel. If you're a doggy person, I am a doggy person. I like dogs. Not all dogs, obviously, not because I hate other dogs, but I'm not going around with a Alsatian cross with a whatever poodle thing. I want a dog dog. Yeah, come on, let's go. Look, I'm looking virtually down on top of that with polarizing glasses. The bank's crashed down there. You might be able to see some of it's collapsed in here. Just down there, big lump of clay is gone. Yeah, it looks fishy, but unfortunately, maybe it's not. There's a classic uh, chub swim over there. Well, if there's any chub in here, if it's not been eaten by any otters or anything like that. Come on, babe. Come on. Go on. Under that tree. Two tree roots there. You'd have to creep in up here, feed bait in slowly, and your taking point would be from there to there. 12 feet, 15 feet, and that could be just where the fish are holding up. Trees are just turning, look. Very, very good time of year for river fishing in the autumn. You want it before they get too many leaves. And to be honest, and to be honest, I'm supposed to be going shark fishing <clears throat> down Falmouth, but you know, they shut the marina the other week and it really ticked me off. I had everything set and they just decided to close it because they said, it's too windy on an easterly, it's too windy. Okay, there's no, we all looked, several people who I phoned said, what are they talking about? So there's another reason that was closed, I'm guessing. But um, I thought, you know, I can't be bothered now. I want to go to the river Y. I want to go up and try and catch a barbel and a chub before the floods come for the winter. Conditions, I, I phoned up Woody, Woody at Hereford, Woody's tackle, and he said, the river came up. I said, you had no rain, would you? Only a bit. He said, well, a bit up here is quite a lot in the Welsh mountains. It had come up 12 feet, up high 12 feet. I can't believe that. But he said it's dropped back to when he came last time and had a few fish. So I'm thinking I might just sneak in quickly before the leaves come down, any flooding comes. Of course, people do catch barbel in the floods. I just like the wading type mobile fishing and the conditions this summer it's so low, it gives me a chance of finding a few new swims by wading. I won't be wading in 12 feet of flood water, will I? And there's a fishing chair here. This opens up. It just looks a bit... It looks superb for a stick float, but it also looks sort of dead, doesn't it, to me? One dragonfly coming down there. I just love this view. This, I've always wanted, you know, looking south to west. I've always loved that open view. I thought he was peeing up my foot then. That's not very nice. Come on, out of there. Let's go. Come on. Rats, foxes, pheasants. Well, another sort of warm bit here. It's also telling me pike. You know, coming up to this time of year. It's slow. Some people like those freezing, frosty mornings for pike fishing. I'm afraid in the senior years, I don't. I've done all that. I don't see a thing moving. There's another bridge. Now, what, what fisherman cannot resist standing on a bridge and looking down? Because you can obviously see through the water, and I will be no different. I will be going onto the bridge very carefully, standing back so my shadow does not cast across the fish there. And I'm seeing absolutely nothing. This is more 
uh, clay based I should say, gravel based, I think it's a lodden, I'm not sure. I fished a lot for Barbel many times before, but further downstream. I don't see anything. I don't see. I'll tell a lie. Did, no, I did just see something. That is either a trout or a chub just went up there. Just bolted upstream there. So there are. There's life there. But you think you see down there lots of little minnows in there. What's in there? What's in there, babe? Don't you jump, will you? Don't you jump. Look, he wants to. He wants to jump on a leaf or something. That's water. You can't, and he, the amazing thing is how they can swim. If you've ever held a dog over water, you see the legs going. How do they know how to doggy paddle? How do they know how to doggy paddle? What's in there? Pick him out. Pick him out. How do they know how to doggy paddle? Honestly. Look, this dog's part fisherman. Oh, no question at all. He's looking for chub, dace. He knows the score. For some reason, He's attracted to digging moles. Here, what's in there? Here. What's in there, Baba? Fetch him out. Fetch him out of there. Fetch him out. What's in there? What he does is he makes a hole and then he sniffs in the hole thinking something and he's just a hole he's made. It's a mole. That's Uncle Graham don't like those moles on his lawn. Fetch him out. Fetch him out. Fetch him out. Here, dig him out. Okay, put him. Put him out of there. Fetch him out of there. A rat would have little chance with this gentleman digging him out. Good dog. Good doggy. Nope, nothing in that one. Let's go. Can't keep up with him. He's gone. I think you'd see a fish flash away, wouldn't you? It's spooked. I think you'd see something flash away. Maybe it's a trouty river that they stock. Stunning place, stunning. No, it is absolutely a stunning vista. That big copse over there has some monstrous, monstrous trees in the middle of it. You see them growing out. They must be 150 feet tall, really old, on a golf course. So that's my sort of landmark if I do get lost. And the other landmark will be those pylons in the distance. There's every chance I could get lost, I just basically follow the river. There was a bit here where I reckon there was previously a ditch or a stream, probably what we used to call a carrier that used to feed the river and the small fish would come up in the winter floods to get away or come up and spawn. You guys probably wouldn't see it. I can see the direction it would have taken by the rushes there. It goes all the way over there. That's just totally overgrown now, and I'd say it's largely d due to abstraction, generally, uh, of the water being taken out of the underground aquifers and giving us less and less water for the rivers. I may be wrong, what's your opinion? Any river fishermen out there have noticed all river flows, flows have gone down, and rivers, once they grow over like this, the carrier streams are lost, then of course there's no chance, or very little chance of the fry then going up these carriers, being safe, having a breeding area to grow on and then go back and replenish the river itself. So carrier streams, even side ditches with rivers, do actually play a big part in, in, in maintaining the stock of the river. Come on, boy. Here, Foxy, Foxy, Foxy come in. Too many, too many smells for him here. He's doing his gardening now, look. Come on, here, bunny rabbits, bunny rabbits, foxes, which one's going to, foxes did it. Do we used to call these, anybody out there, teasels? Are they what's called teasels? This hole here, absolutely very, very, very clear. That's some form of spring, because if you look, okay, I'm going to fall in there, don't go in, Graham, don't go in. There's bits of gravel, can you see the gravel? Back over there and there faster flow so I feel there's more of a spring here. This might even be some form of headwater where it comes out of the ground. This would have been a great big pool the size of this rush bed previously years ago. I'm going to say that. What's going on there? <laughs> Good boy. Let's go. Come on, here, 
Bloody rabbits. So you can actually live that sense of freedom with the dog. If he's that type of dog, he's, he's got character. He's, most Jack Russells are outside dogs, very loyal. A quick look at the view here, guys. Just love it. Makes me want to go all types of fishing. It's just a sense of freedom in these weird times we're living in. Look at that. I suppose I'm very lucky to be able to live within a mile or so of this. And up here, although it doesn't look it, is a field, absolute field, of sunflowers. I imagine growing for the sunflower seeds. There's a huge amount of weeds in amongst it. But at least there's plenty of sunflowers there. And with the blue and the yellow there, quite, uh, quite stunning. If what ma man made, it doesn't matter. It's just nice to see that colour. It's sure getting windy. That looks like the world record sunflower there. Not many insects on them though. I've seen hardly any insects this year. So you can tell that this was probably some form of, I want to say floodplain from a bigger river, because you've got a really deep ditch here, down there, which would go down to the river to drain that sloping soil up there. So that would, I guess, get waterlogged. Many, many years ago, traditionally, the farmers had to dig, dig a deep a drainage ditch there. Big field. I'm fairly lost now. I've no direction pretty well. I think I might pick up something, but I'm looking for those little yellow discs that the uh, ramblers and stuff put there, you know, the Hampshire countryside people. I'm just trying to find if there's something across here. They've only got to be a little bit out the direction of the arrows, and you go, with a big field especially, it's like boat fishing, two or three degrees out and you're 400 yards away. Oh, here we go. Uh, not quite sure what the rope's here for. But it's telling me these things. It's telling me to go here. I don't know what that means. Probably means the old bridge is a bit sus. Another little bit of stream there. All new to me. Can't see a thing in it. There's a yellow arrow again. Telling me to go to the right. My goodness, this is a walk and a half. Giant whatever's. I might have to carry a doggy through here. Well, this is a voyage of discovery. My wife might not, might not even see me back before tea. Or tomorrow, if ever. What are we going to eat? Sunflower seeds? So here's something different to save you guys some money. More for sea fishermen than fresh water. Get yourself an old milk bottle container. Rinse it out. Get all your rusty sea hooks. Put them into the container. And then pour over them. So just plain malt vinegar. These are all my sea hooks that were left over and I found in various stages of decomposition. And there's some there that I know I'm to clean up. Now look how much has come off of these. This is about three or four days. You can leave it a few hours to clean your hooks up. It's an old school standard procedure and the amount of rust that's come off of those hooks is amazing. And I can probably get a file and sit in the evenings and work away and get those uh, clean. So I'm going to drain them off and then I'm going to rinse them and dry them. Look at that muck coming out of there. Now, I'll give them a rinse in the sink now. And you can see a lot of those are definitely still usable. And some of them are patterns I might not get again. You can actually see the rust in the corners there. Put some water in it. And it's all come off of those hooks. Give them a good old shake around. Strain it off. And at this stage, I'll leave a little bit of water in there, right? And then give them a real good hot oh, shake. Get hold of them, it's difficult filming one. You can see in the bottom of the sink all the bits and pieces of rust that's come off. The water's almost black. Black. Straight it all off. Then I'm going to dry them out with some paper towel. 
Just keep rinsing those and you'll be amazed if you shake them hard enough how much more rust comes off. You see the residue around the sink there. So drain them right off. It's a bit like cookery program this. And then I'll get a piece of newspaper, some paper towel in. Them all out on there. Shake them all out. Look at this, this is one like a, a tuna circle hook that I got out of a marlin. It had been lost on a long line and I caught the marlin and actually got the hook out of it. It had been caught by a long line and broken away. I can imagine they cut it off. And these ones you can't, well you might be able to see them there. Uh, they're a sort of short shank live bait hook we used to use in Mexico. There's one there. That's a short shank wide gape mackerel hook for live baiting for marlin. All these can be used for conger, anything, anything sea fishing. So there you go. All that remains for me to now is to get hooks like this, clean them up, a little bit of light emery paper and a file on the tip and I've got a bunch of hooks. There's an old needle eye one there. Can you see the End of that, it's a needle eye for trolling ballyhoo baits for stuff like sailfish, kingfish, wahoo, etc. There's some more old live bait hooks. I've had these years and years in a the box, they go rusty, and now they can be used again. Throw nothing away. So now all you've got to do is get yourself some sandpaper of whichever grade you want, and you can slowly work away doing the shank back of the hook any other rust that you think might be on there. To be honest, most of the rust will in fact come off with that uh, soaking in the vinegar. A little tip is to always try and stroke the paper away from the point of the hook so you don't spike your finger going in towards the hook. Then just take a file, this is a sort of very small grade file, and again work in a way, taken away from the point of the hook, you can get a bit of sharpness on there and uh, just do it slowly so you don't slip and spike your finger and you'd be amazed how sharp uh, you can get that point even on an old hook. Of course, you've got some there which will be uh, cadmium plated or whatever plating they use. You can see in a couple of them have got a bit of plating gone. There you can see the live bait hook, the wide gape, short shank, which is very good catch and fish up to you know a couple hundred pounds. And the other one is an eagle claw on the right there, wide gape. And just a standard really hook that you use for smooth hounds, uh, tote and stuff like that. And there you can see the needle eye, which we use trolling for sailfish, wahoo, kingfish, rigging on wire on a ballyhoo bait. Foreign fishing of course. Then all I do is you can either paint them, which I have done, I used to with my marlin hooks on twin rig systems on the marlin lures, paint them and then just cut the point off when I want it, you know, file it off to sharpen it. Or you can oil it like I've done there in a stick oil and you can keep them individually, the largest you know, hook sizes, whichever is you know, over say a 6 or something like that, you might want to uh, do individually. Once you've got the oil on your fingers, don't waste it. I spread it all over. All you've got to do then is if the smaller hooks, get yourself something like WD-40, a nice plastic container, spray some in the bottom of that. It's all fairly self-explanatory and this will stop them hopefully going rusty until you use them. The main thing is keep out any form of moisture, salt water and stuff like that. Especially salt water. Salt water is a killer of everything and metal. I'm right down to small hooks like the black bream hooks, whiting hooks and that. They're all going to go in there, shake them, mix them all around. Give them a real good shake up. Just like a cooking program. Get in there, don't spike yourself on the hooks, just lightly move them around. Pop the lid on, job done. I hope you enjoyed this as a tip and we'll see you in the next fishing show.